In this video, I'll show you how to create a custom batten off mask for any telescope in just a few minutes. So there are a couple of ways that you can get your focus right on your when you're doing your astrophotography. One thing, you can simply buy these ready to go and um, they have them on Amazon and various uh, astrophotography shops and they're not that expensive, probably around 14 bucks, something like that. But if you have access to a 3D printer, you can make them yourself. And so uh, the, the hard thing really is to get this pattern. Because if you go into a CAD program and you try and draw all these out of there, you will soon discover that it's a major pain in the butt. And so there's a much easier way. And I'm going to show you that today. So basically I'm going to go to a website to get you a free SVG file. And you can actually change a lot of the parameters here. We'll export it and then we'll use FreeCAD to convert it to an STL file so that our printer can print it. So let's head on over to that website now. I'll put a link to this website in the description uh, so you can go to this. And this, uh, we need to put in various parameters to create the mask. So I'm, I've got a 200 millimeter focal length, which is going to be the primary use of that lens. And then here for the outer diameter, that's actually going to be the inside diameter, but I'll explain that in a few minutes. And this inner diameter, they're just talking about this hole in the center right here. Now, the reason, what I've chosen, I want to test to see if I can do one that allows more light in it, that has more, less slots. And I found that the ones with a whole bunch of slots block a lot of light and they're hard to print. And so I'm going to test it in this configuration and see if it works. And if it doesn't, no big deal, I'll just create another one. In order to get them wide like this, I've clicked this uh, use 3D order spectrum and then I've changed the batten off factor to 100 and the stem width to 1 to 1.1. And so you can play around with this and to your specifications and print it how you want. When you're done, you just say draw batten off mask, which I've already done, and then you just download the SVG. I've created a new part called Nikon 80 to 400 because that's the uh, dimensions of my Nikon lens. And the first thing I need to do is make a body. And I'm going to do this with the uh, part design. We're going to create a body. And so there's the body. And the reason we have to do this is because when we import the SVG and convert it to a sketch, it must be a part of a body. And if it isn't, I've tried dragging it into a body and I can't seem to get it to work, so I create the body first. So in this body we're going to file import and then it's this version 1 right here and we're going to import it as an SVG geometry and then I'm going to accept this asking about the DPI and now we want to create this or I, I'm sorry, we want to create a sketch from all these paths. So to do that, we go over to the draft workbench and we select everything. And then um, I need to expand one of these dialogues. I can't remember which one it is. All right, now if yours isn't showing like mine, it's going to be hidden over here and it's got a blue thing on top with some figures and a red thing on the bottom. Basically this is the draft to sketch. So with all these selected you click it and there's going to be a delay as it does the processing. There's our spinning pinwheel. Now here's our sketch. So with everything selected I don't need these paths anymore so I'm just going to delete them. Now the sketch is part of the body and that's critical. And now we can proceed as usual. So we can go into part design and then we can select this and then we can pad it. Okay. I take that back. It's not a part. So I'm going to drag it into that body. Should be now. Now. 
Okay, and now we're getting closer. So let's change this. Um, let's just say four millimeters. All right. Now what I have done is that this outer diameter is actually where I want to add on to. This is actually the inner because what I noticed with in practice is that it creates these facets. And so I don't want them. I want it smooth. I'm sure there is a way to do it. But um you know, I don't I don't really know how to do that with uh, FreeCAD, I could... But anyway, so what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to extrude a, a lip on so I can just flip it over in my lens with this being the approximate inside diameter. And so we'll do that next. So we're gonna select this face and then we're gonna draw a sketch. And then from the center line, we're going to draw a circle, grab this right in the center, and then we'll create a diameter. And I want to make this at least three millimeters thick because uh, the walls can get really weak if you're doing like one and one and a quarter millimeters or something like that. So the uh, diameter here that we're going to specify, uh, let's try. Um, Okay. And then we want to do another one inside because if we did it, if we extruded this right now, it would cover all of our holes. So I don't want that. I just want to add on. And so now we want this to be just ever so slightly inside. So I, I know that it's 108. If I did 108 like this, you, you probably will work, but I want to come in just a smidge and so that I know that it's going, because I left some room, so let's do 108.5 whoops, uh, wrong way, sorry 107.5 and now that'll clean up that edge and then it'll give me a, a mounting location Okay, so now it's going to be smooth. It's uh, going to be, the walls are going to be thick enough and I've got enough here that it won't, I've got maybe 10 millimeters or so where it won't slip off. And so now I want to check uh, the uh, dimensions, make sure I did this right. So I'm going to put it in the orientation that I want and then I'm going to go to tech draw and then from tech draw you say insert default page. And then this is kind of weird, but you go back and you select this again, and then you say Tektra insert view, and that's going to be the view that I want. And now I can check my dimensions. So I know that about 108 will give me enough clearance to slip over the lens. So when you select it, and then it's going to be this diameter and we'll take that dimension so that's going to be 107.75 which is the what we want and then you select the outer one and then arrow down to the diameter there and that one is going to be 114 so that's about a three and a half millimeter wall thickness and that'll be sturdy and it'll last and so now but those two measures are verified. I think that's at the point now where I can print it. So to do that, it's very simple. You select the entire body, and then you do File Export, and then it'll just export that. Now we go over to, um, I use the Prusa Slicer. Here's the body and that's upside down and it appears it might have an error oh it does okay i have it on the wrong face so 
I'll go fix that. I didn't, yeah, I didn't spin it around. Okay, so the pad, it's very simple. I need to go in the opposite direction. And now it's flush uh, with the side that uh, we need since it's symmetrical. It doesn't matter which one. Sorry about that. And we're back in our slicer. Now it's perfect. It's oriented the correct way. And as you can see, it's now smooth. When you look in FreeCAD, you will see that it had like a seam there. But that's not how the solid body is actually rendered. And so I do it this way to clean it up and merge the two bodies together. And then I have an, a perfectly round. For one thing, it's quicker to print because it's just going to go in a circle instead of doing a, a correction about 300 times every circle. So this is quick. And so let's print it out and see how it comes out. Okay, so here's my mask. And it turns out pretty well. Let's see if it fits. Yeah, I think that'll work just fine. I am out. I've got cloudy skies, but I'm going to try this. And just put on the Batonoff mask. Okay, so here are our first images. So let's adjust the uh, focus. Okay, that appears to be pretty good. I'm seeing an artifact on one side. I'm wondering if that's the hole in the center. Let me take a little bit longer exposure. Okay. All right, now I have a lot of clouds, but I'm gonna try it anyway. I'm gonna take the Batonoff mask off. We can only try. And then let's try a 10 second and see how sharp the scars are. Now once I've taken the mask off, you can see what that artifact really is. And that is a second star quite close. And I didn't notice that the first time that I focused on this. Uh, but I just was grabbing the brightest star I could see. So anyway, it does work, and it uh, works uh, okay with the hole in the center, too. My whole purpose of doing that was to let in a little bit more light. Uh, the hole is actually intended for a secondary mirror on a reflector, but I just decided to try it open for this uh, example. Now, another way of doing this is to go into the focus mode and try and expand onto a bright star. And it doesn't always work with the Batonoff mask, but sometimes it does if you have a big enough star. So I like to try it. I have found that if you focus on Mars, it works great. And so the issue is, is that it's a little bit lighter and a little bit harder to do. So I found that the most consistent method is to go to the preview mode and take a five or 10 second exposure and zoom in so I can really see the diffraction spikes. So here's an example doing just that. And I can't remember exactly what this is. It's probably Mars and it's on a different Batonoff mass. But the goal here is to get that center spike right in the middle. And if it's to one side or another, then you are out of focus and you need to try a little bit harder to get it in the center. But once you get the hang of it and you look at that center spike and make sure that it's centered, uh, this turns into a very easy and repeatable process and it's very consistent. So just in closing, a, a Batonoff mask really is a, a great tool. And you can buy them if you don't want to do this with your printer and just don't want to mess around with it, then that's fine. But if you want to do some custom work, uh, it's simple and easy to do this way. 
and it just takes a few minutes. So anyway, I hope you found that helpful, and I'll see you next time.